Are you finally awake? You gotta give me a second. I, I'm a little disoriented. Join the club. You don't remember setting up camp, do you? I don't remember anything. After we reached the tree line. None of us do. And we did a food inventory? From the depletion, it looks like we've been out here for at least three or four days. It's not possible. Check this out. So we have got no compass, no comms, no coordinates. We weren't really expecting the comms equipment to work, were we? I mean, it's been three years of expeditions and three years of radio silence. Let's pack up and get moving. We've already lost a lot of the day. Hi, yes. So this scene, a half hour into Annihilation, really frustrates me. The main characters, a team of extremely qualified scientists, have just entered the Shimmer, a mysterious alien bubble engulfing part of Florida. They're just the latest set of researchers sent in to investigate the Shimmer, which has swallowed hundreds of like-minded explorers in the three years since it first appeared. Anyway, in this scene we learn that A, the Shimmer is somehow affecting and influencing everybody's memories, B, the team has no contact with the outside world, and C, not even their compasses work. And yet, we're still supposed to believe that these very smart people would press on with their mission towards the center of this entity. This is not what real scientists would do. The logical move would be to turn around. But the thing is, when we talk about annihilation, we really have to ask... Does it matter? Annihilation is a 2017 science fiction film about change. It's a dense, complicated, and thought-provoking text. Normally, these are qualities that make a great movie, but we can't treat Annihilation the same way. Writer-director Alex Garland endlessly convolutes his own subtext and emotional canvas, yet I find the broad ambitions of this thing nothing short of fascinating. Long story short, I'm going to recap and spoil this movie in order to talk about it, but it's okay, you should stick around. The movie might not be worth your time, but this video definitely is. The plot goes a little something like this. Lena, Natalie Portman, and Kane, Oscar Isaac, are a married couple drifting apart. The pair met in the military, where Kane stayed, while Lena left to become a biologist and eventually a professor at Johns Hopkins. With their relationship collapsing, Lena has an affair with her co-worker. Kane, still in the military, finds out and chooses to leave for another dangerous mission. But before he goes, he tells her... I do... Love you. Lena. Little does Kane know he's being sent into the Shimmer, that alien soap bubble. Kane vanishes for more than a year, then abruptly turns up back in Lena's house. He asks if any of this matters, and then his body starts breaking down. Kane's former handlers grab him and Lena, who gets recruited to enter the Shimmer herself. That's how we get to that scene that drives me nuts. Let's pack up and get moving. In the Shimmer, the team of scientists slowly turn against itself and meet this terrifying bear that talks in human screams. It is the stuff of nightmares. Eventually, Lena reaches the center of the Shimmer, where she finds out that the cane who came to visit her is actually a duplicate. She enters the Shimmer's source, where she meets and fights a being that tries to replicate her. Lena burns the Shimmer-infested lighthouse, then leaves. Back at the military base, I refuse to call it Area X, that sounds like something out of a bad 90s comic book, Lena is interrogated, and we're told that Kane has woken up. Lena and Kane embrace, but the final scene shows that they've both been forever altered by their experiences in the big ol' soap bubble. Now, this is a very literal plot summary of a movie working overtime on symbolic terms. At its core, Annihilation poses the question of whether or not two people who are constantly changing can stay together. As a result, it's hard to talk about the film because this is such an abstract question. But it's also rich dramatic territory. No one, no matter who you are, will be the same person they are today, tomorrow. That's a scary prospect. It's impossible to hold on to the self you are in this very moment as our environment, our internal biology, and our agency push us in different directions. Honestly, the last movie I can remember that visualized abstract ideas like this was Pixar's Inside Out. But Annihilation's closest competitor has to be Denny Villeneuve's Arrival. Both films have an essential subplot about the protagonist's rocky romantic relationship, employ a non-linear narrative, and have brilliant cinematography. But Arrival works on both literal and symbolic terms, while Annihilation needs you to be invested in its metaphors. 
Garland represents the ways individuals evolve and self-destruct both visually and through dialogue. In a way, it's two bereavements. My beautiful girl and the person I once was. Many of the conversations between characters are laden with double entendres and foreshadowing, as if instead of discussing events, they're talking through the film's themes. That's a metaphor! Sure. To be fair, Garland tries to tell us how to read the movie immediately. One of the first images we're shown is a meteor crashing into a lighthouse, which produces a great frame but is incredibly unlikely if this happened in real life. We're also told that the government has successfully hid the Shimmer for years, despite the fact that it's gigantic and, you know, satellites exist. And then there's that scene where the characters are almost unfazed by the fact that a soap bubble is fucking with their minds. But again... Doesn't matter. If the film avoids being deciphered literally, then we're left with images and imprecise words. Imprecise words. Imprecise words. Imprecise words. Yeah. She get it cause we mean it. So what does change look like? That's where the shimmer comes in. Inside this zone, flowers and vegetation endlessly mutate. The wildlife and animals become startling, sometimes beautiful variations on whatever they were before. And that oh god, that fucking bear! And the shimmer works on people too. I mean, this guy isn't looking too good. The intestines of terrified soldiers move upon reflection. Just as in the real world, change is paradoxically a constant. So, we're always changing, but are we getting better or worse? Garland's fixated on this idea of self-destruction. If we're not staying the same, are we destroying ourselves? What's the line between growth and, well... Annihilation. Again, the Shimmer doesn't have any kind of agenda or motive or endpoint in mind. It just generates change. It doesn't consciously make certain things different. It's an existential symptom of a complicated landscape. The alterations it makes aren't all positive. That bear isn't any happier now that it speaks and screams. But losing your mind over change doesn't seem to help either. Just take a look at Anya, played by Jane the Virgin's Gina Rodriguez, who freaks out at the prospect of her uncontrollable transformation. On the other hand, Josie, aka the amazing Tessa Thompson, refuses to fight the Shimmer and vanishes into the trees. We never find out what happens to Josie. We don't know the lasting impact of her choice to embrace change. All we have is the quietly content look on her face. Finally, there's Lena and Kane, who somehow make it back to each other after both experiencing a radical metamorphosis. How can two people who are constantly changing stay together? Garland's answer mostly boils down to acceptance and luck. According to Annihilation, rejecting change is another form of self-destruction, though the film understands that embracing change is just as scary. We have no control over the outcome, and no matter what we do, the self we are today will be gone tomorrow. That's pretty profound. So why isn't this movie better? Rewatching Annihilation 10 months after release, it's clear Garland makes a choice that unnecessarily overcomplicates everything, the non-linear narrative. We open with Lena, back at Area X, and her interrogation becomes the framing device for the entire film. Then we cut to the meteor crashing into the lighthouse, then back to Lena at Johns Hopkins after Kane has left, but without any of the necessary information to understand the relationship. Then five and a half minutes in, we get a flashback within a flashback of Lena thinking about Kane before he left. Things are mostly linear from here, aside from the other flashback to Lena and Kane in bed, until Lena decides to join the mission into the Shimmer, when we get pulled out of the main narrative and back into the interrogation room. Then there's this quick shot of the team entering the soap bubble, and then we get the flashback of Lena having sex with her colleague, only we don't know whether this happened while she was still with Kane, or in the year while he was gone. And after that, we get the scene where the characters don't care that their memories are being messed with. Ah! Do you see what I'm saying? Annihilation does such a great job visualizing abstract concepts, but it gets in its own way by organizing its story out of order. Plus, since the film is about change, throwing non-linear images of Portman at the audience convolutes our understanding of her character. Garland makes the viewer rearrange the story and parse out his pontifications, when they probably thought they were just going to see a lot more of this. The Shimmer is an incredibly interesting location, 
So why do we keep getting pulled out of it? The flashes forward to Lena being interrogated are dead weight, and the non-chronological cuts make it hard to figure out if we should be invested in Lena and Kane staying together. And make no mistake, that's definitely the central relationship. It's just that Garland makes it very, very difficult to gain an understanding of that emotional landscape. Again, this is a structural problem. Generally, when there's a single piece of a film that detracts from its quality, I like to blame a studio or outside force. But this is Garland the auteur biting off more than he can chew. That's not an insult, he can chew a heck of a lot. Still, I couldn't really tell you Lena's arc on literal or metaphorical terms. At the end of the day, Annihilation hides its truths. And that's okay in theory, but this choice really hurts the movie. There's meaning to be found, it's just harder to get at it than it should be. Beneath the fabulous cinematography lies a dense, disorganized thesis. I don't love Annihilation, but I should. We don't get big, risky science fiction very often, so to see a film like this get made, but held back by such a fundamental flaw, is a bummer. You just can't help but wish this thing had lived up to its best qualities. Then again, that's the thing about change. It's almost always as frustrating as it is fulfilling. Man.